In a season of chaos, the Patterson U and Rawley Snow Tribe walked into 2023 with more questions than answers, especially at quarterback. And while it took the Patterson U less time to answer that glaring concern, the Rawley Snow Tribe have rallied around veteran Jonathan Keel, who stepped back onto the field and after a tumultuous start, has guided Rawley to their second straight playoff berth. Will the U melt the Snow Tribe the same way they did in week one behind the play of both Carlos Croslin and Kareem Moon? Or will Keel, alongside defensive veterans like Isaac Negron, pull off the upset of the year? We find out as we count down to throw off. Yeah. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. Park, New Jersey. I'm Matt Ryan. Welcome back to the A7FL playoffs on A7FL.TV and internationally on DAZN. Rob Fabian and Corey Hammond will join me in a mere matter of moments as we witness the Patterson U and the Rahway Snow Tribe face off once again, but this time in the winner go home season known as the A7FL playoffs. <laughs> It's not really as much fun in the holes. It's just the competition and game situations. Like, for football, I think what positions and adversity you overcome tells you what kind of team you have. So when you got a team that's putting up 50 every week, they don't know what it's like to be a BIC down 20 to 6, fourth right. quarter, and you need a big play from Ashanti, he gives it to you. You need a big play from Sterry, he gives it to you. You tie the game up in the fourth quarter with four minutes left. Those guys yeah. not into those situations. You got the night crawlers who are just going to walk through Florida, and you got the other teams out in Vegas. And, I mean, some of them never even been down before. They're just blowing teams out. They're using it like practice scrimmages. So, for us, I feel like personally, and you can call me biased, I feel like no matter if you're from Jersey, Maryland, D.C., Boston, or whoever comes out of the Northeast, I think it's going to be more battle to test it and ready to just win a championship just because we've been in those shoes we've been in there together where some guys they might fold because they've just never been in that situation before You are looking live at Asbury Park Stadium as the Rahway Snow Tribe look to pull what would be the biggest upset of the afternoon and defeat the Patterson U here, a battle of the six seed and, pardon me, the five seed, although the six seed and the three seed here in the A7FL Northeast Playoffs on Wild Card Weekend. But here's Shane Turner about to start this first round playoff game with the three on one. And it will be Henry Smith, Henrock, returning the ball back number three. He'll get to the 30, he'll get to the 31, he'll cut through two defenders, he gets past another, he stays up right at the 45, trying to get past one, and brought down at the 47 yard line, and that is a big play there. Team, but if you get the ball close to the 50 on this three on one, you did your job, but credit the, the Schnow Tribe for not allowing the touchdown, and that's Brandon Hambrick after missing the initial tackle, making the tackle on the second attempt. And it will be first and 10. Croslin will start behind center for the Patterson U. First and 10, two wide receivers. You see number 21, that's Marcus Hardbody McKinney. And there's the handoff to number 20, Willie Easterling, a.k.a. Willie Money Mayweather. And Isaac Negron tackling his former teammate for a loss on the first play from scrimmage. Rocking those very lovely oranges. Yeah, I've, I've taken a lot of flack for my comments on the richness of that orange. But that is a great that color. That is a carrot orange. That is a lush orange. Like, you, you see that, and it's lush. That is ripe. That's what we'll say. <laughs> it is absolutely ripe. And a great play here. They leave Negron unblocked, and he makes them pay for it and bring up second and long. And a play action. Croslin throws this one. Caught! And held on to, and that will get him to the 40. And that's Marcus McKinney, a.k.a. Hard Body, with the reception. And, and the, it will be third down. And the ball actually squeaked out a little Ooh, bit, I think. Incomplete. So They'll it, call that incomplete. Good, good coverage from Brandon Hambrick. You, you haven't really seen him all year at the cornerback position for Schnotrab. He's stepping in 
Um, looks like he's stepping in for uh, That's, what I believe uh, is Max Ralph. Taylor. That was usually uh, Taylor's jersey. Going four wide against the Chino Tribe defensive line. The snap. Croslin in trouble. Croslin will throw this one and almost swatted down, almost in the hands of number 22. That's Brandon Hambrick, and it will be fourth down. And, and it was Marquise Machut. Shug, the running back that we've seen get a lot of yardage for the Snow Tribe. He was the defensive end to get pressure there. A win here will upset the entire apple cart. We would get Rahway against Baltimore in Baltimore and BIC versus Animals. Play action, the handoff. Pouncing through is number 32, laying the shoulder in it on the tackle and a flag on the play. That's Seth Batson, little boat. They go jet counter, and then they follow with the running back dive. It seems like they're able to get some good yardage there. We'll see what the penalty flag is. That's Fletcher. That's their speed rusher. And although the Snow Tribe are, you know, considering themselves a running first team, that's a mismatch potentially on the smaller defensive end. If you're able to get him blocked on the edge, you might be able to get some runs here. In motion, the handoff again to Batson, and Batson met at the line and brought down by number 13, Big Burton. Yeah, if you're going to run the ball, you got to get number 13 blocked, that's for hit, sure. Hit him with that Snorlax, just kind of grabbed him and then fell on top of him, and there is a man you don't want chasing you. There's Big Burton. No relation to A.O. Burton on the BIC. Not related. Same name. Play the same position at times, but totally different styles of play and genetics, apparently. <laughs> They'll bring up second and 12 for the Snow Tribe. Um, One and wide maybe they're going three in a row. In motion. They'll bounce it to Pedro again. Pedro will push the pile and gain, get back to the line of scrimmage and maybe gain another, and it will be third down. For those who, who joined us on our 1 o'clock game, you saw a team in the Animals use motion and move guys here, move guys there, advantageously to put their offense in a better position for the one-on-one -on -one matchup. What you saw there is the same motion, that jet motion that they use in the first two plays, but there really wasn't any reason for anyone to do anything other than just watch Keels, see who he handed the ball off to, and attack. There was no misdirection. There was no use for that jet motion. So when you're calling an offense, when you're designing an offense, if you're going to use motion, it is something that, you know, the great offensive play callers use. But you, you have to use it intentionally and with a purpose. And now it'll bring up third and long, which has really been a tough situation for the Snow Tribe all season. In motion is Shane Turner. The screen to Turner. Turner will catch it. Turner will try to turn on the afterburners. He cuts towards the sideline. Shane Turner getting the first down. He'll get to the 40, the 35, and run out of play inside the 30-yard line. And the Snow Tribe on third down, making you, Corey, uh, eat a little bit of crow on that one. And it'll be first and 10 for the Rahway Orange. And they go back to that jet kind of bubble motion. And what it does is it opens up the bubble screen. And to, to effectively run a quick screen, you have to have two things happen at the point of attack. Great blocking, which you see here. And you have to see a, a guy with the ball in his hands find the lane. And Shane Turner, who has been injured with a rib injury since week one, has been able to make plays still for his quarterback all season. And on that play there, he finds a seam and takes advantage of it for the first down. Sadiq Pitts in on the stop. Clock will continue to run. The only time the clock stops in the first quarter is after a scoring play or on a three-on-one throw-off. And this is playoff football. It's the A7FL playoffs. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and also share the link. Let people know you're watching the A7FL, the best, the best football in spring football. And they'll hand off again on that quick toss. And there's, there's Marcel Chapman, who's... When the Snow Tribe is going, he's their best statistical wide receiver, and you see him there on the jet motion, a former quarterback, just a playmaker all around in this league. And on that jet that they faked on the first two plays, he gets it this time, gets a decent game to stay, stay ahead of the sticks. See, I, I, I try to stay away from the J-Rock blasphemy because he tackles me so often. <laughs> the handoff and cutting through and There's getting Shug. to the 25. Shug pushing through the pile and brought down at the 16-yard line. And you, when you thought he was about to go down, he decided that he wanted a couple extra yardage. So he dug his feet down in there and got seven extra yards on that spin move. And that's why he's been one of the consistent running threats for the Snow Tribe team. 
And as much Snow Tribe blasphemy as we've had as a booth and as a show all season, right now they're driving the ball on this mighty U defense and looking to put their stamp on this game early on in the first quarter. If you are looking past an opponent, you are creating an opportunity. And with 7-10 left to play, speaking of Burton, big yuck in the, in the chat. Keel looking at the entire city of Patterson about to come after him in the Snow Tribe offense, but finding oh, a flag on the play in that run back by uh, Devin Kennedy. And again, they go with that jet motion sweep look. Based on where the flag was thrown, it looked like it's likely a hold, but we'll see what the official call is here. And a shout out to our, our staff here today. Call Gardella on graphics. Zach Morgan, our technical director. Stats is David Silverman running the things upstairs. Ryan DePaul and our uh, scoreboard operator, Rocco DeMilo, joining us back here on the program. And our producer, Alex Boom Boom Silverman, who just let me know that it was holding on the offense, so it'll be first and 20. Yeah, that's a drive killer right there. Holding not only makes Ryan DePaul very angry, but on first and 10, if you hold, it's first and 20. Can't go backwards. And they will run it again, that end around, cutting inside, and Demon Time Dev brought down at the 26. It'll be second down. Great play there to tackle him in the open field and brings up second and 18. So glad you're joining us here on A7FL.TV and internationally on DAZN. We want you to join us for the A7FL Championship. For more information on that, go to A7FL.com slash championship. Buy the ticket, take the ride, and join us in the desert. One of these two teams trying to punch their ticket to move one step closer to representing the Eastern Conference. Keel the snap. With time, he will take it. He will go on his bicycle. He'll get there past he the defender. He'll get past Stephen Jones. And Jonathan Keel getting to the five. First down, Rahway. And that's what he does. And you see, he's either a little upset that he didn't score or he's feeling it there after that run. But that's a great play from Jonathan Keels to get on opening field and find a way to impact this game. Just let's hope after a quick breather, he can get back in there. But you see here, he finds a seam, gets there, and a great juke move there. If Harab was here on his birthday, there's a huss. And then Stephen Jones is able to bring him down after the initial miss. And it will be first and goal. And it'll be Marcel Chapman that takes over the helm at the quarterback position. A longtime Schnotra, excuse me, Spanktown quarterback, Marcel Chapman. He's also their extra point quarterback. And watch the pressure here from the defense. Setting him in motion is Batson. And now Ch capped it in the touchdown Rahway. The Rahway Snow Tribe and Marcel Chapman putting it on the board first. And people in Patterson shock the Rahway Snow Tribe with the 6 nothing lead with 446 left to go in the first. And for as much criticism as we sometimes have for the Snow Tribe offense. They were pretty creative in their play calls. They were pretty basic when they needed to be, and they blocked. And that's how you win the, the, the games in the A7FL is your offensive line and skill position. Get the blocks on the defense. And when they had seams, the playmakers were able to get yardage. And there's Marcel Chapman getting the Rawway Snow Tribe up 6 nothing early in this game. And we'll see if they go for the one or the two-point conversion. Ryan Shamar on the sideline right now must be apoplectic, or what is he doing to bounce this team back here after getting scored on and getting stopped on their first drive? Going for one here from the five-yard line. Chapman throws this one, and that one intended for Cameron Steep, pardon me, Ricky Barnett, the tight end, and that one will be incomplete. Oh. <laughs> what the U has been all season is a team that takes advantage of their dominant run game, and if they can get on the if they can get a couple good runs, here is the three on one run back. Smith avoiding one defender, cuts to the sideline. Smith brought down, and then inside the thirty five yard line, they'll mark him down near the thirty seven. That's Emani Roman with the tackle there. Looked like Henrock almost had a little bit of a seam there. Looks like they're gonna go straight to the run game and go right at the beef of this Snow Tribe defense. And they load up on the offensive line. 
The handoff. That's to Stephen Jones. And Stephen Jones ripping off a first down and more. Getting across the 50 and brought down at the 46. Now, Rob is not here, but for his birthday, a present. Deshaun <laughs> Johnson just drove the snow drive defense so far down the field that he was pushing a man as fast as his running back could run through the hole. Watch 76 here. Excuse me, young pardon man. Me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. No, no. And there's the quick handoff again. Jones will have to go around. Jones brought down, and he'll go back to the other side of the 50. A loss of about five, and it'll be second and 15 on the 49. Deshaun Fullwood makes that cutback a mistake. And a lot of times when you're a running back, you, you, you don't have anywhere to go in the initial hole. In the A7FL, a lot of these guys, they'll, they'll cut it back. They'll try to go for the touchdown. Well, if you're able to get him before he gets around that other edge, it's a lot of times going to be a loss of yardage. And that's exactly what the you do not want. But on second and 15, after that great run on first down, which they got 15, they lose yards on first down again with the run. So great job from Snow Tried defense to answer. And it will be second and 15 on the 49-yard line. When they have Deshaun Johnson in the backfield like that to pull, that's a tough look. The snap. Croslin under pressure will avoid the defenders. Oh, no. Stays upright, but brought down around the line of scrimmage, the initial line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and 10, and Isaac Negron in on the tackle. That was a sneaky blitz from the Snow Tribe, and they were able to land the blitz, but they weren't able to get Croslin down. So credit the quarterback to get back to the initial line of scrimmage. It was all he could do. It almost looked like he was going to break it, but that's just the athleticism that Pablo brings to this U offense. And it'll make it third and 10. Third and 10, two and a half minutes left to go. This is the second drive for the Patterson U this afternoon. Yeah, Matt, if I told you in the beginning of this game that as the first quarter wound down, it was 6 nothing Rawway, and the U looked like they don't know how to figure out this snow drive defense yet, <laughs> you would have thought I was in a different dimension. I would have, I would have had so many questions. <laughs> the A7FL would have likely called for a uh, test of sorts. <laughs> the snap on third and ten. Here comes the pressure on Crossland and Isaac Negron getting in on the sack. And it will be fourth down and Isaac Negron looking like a sound investment for the Rawway Snow Tribe. Yeah, more than worth the money on that play, and it'll bring up fourth and extremely long again for the U. And they can't panic and just go for it because they think it's the right thing to do. That's another great sequence from the Snow Tribe defense, and if you thought that they were going to get blown out in this game, you thought wrong, at least early. Great play from like Najee Hall, and great play from... Hey, man, I was wrong, maybe. Isaac Negron is potentially the difference. Look at him. He's everywhere today. It'll be a three-on-one throw-off. Rules are like a traditional punt. And the Snow Tribe, I just remember, the Snow Tribe had to go 90 yards last time. And now they'll have to go 95, maybe, ni nope, 97 yards. I don't know what... The, uh, Me neither. <laughs> Let's just go with it. Ay, mon dieu. Nice. I would I would love to know how many times in a quarter this year the Snow Tribe have gotten 90 yards of offense. And now they did get some with the penalties, but it'll be first and 10, and here they go again. The toss back, finding the seam, running right into the defender, Stephen, of number 23. That's Sadiq Pitts. And it will be second down and another hard run from number 32, Seth Batson. He was looking for contact on that one. Well, we talk about solid gold boats all the time. And if Seth Batson can continue to run like that, he may just put himself in the SGB conversation. But another great design from Snow Tribe. They go with that motion that I was criticizing before, but it seems like they have more counters out of it they go with that bubble jet and where they used to go jet or counter or th they did the bubble screen now they go with the toss opposite so great job in the off week for the snow tribe to start drawing some stuff up and it'll bring up a manageable second and five exactly where they want to be the snap keel throws it caught Pushing through, that's number three on the reception. And that's Marcel Chapman pushing ahead. Getting the first down, it'll be interesting to where they mark him out. The clock will continue to run here in the first. And the guy who came in to play quarterback that ran it in for the touchdown, he's also probably Keel's most reliable wide receiver out there. 
that was a great on-time play call because, look, throws it on time, wide open, that's how you call offensive pass plays. And if the, the Snow Tribe are able to do that consistently, the U's going to have a tough time. The Rahway Snow Tribe lead the Patterson U six to nothing. What? So go on to social media right now, a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, send somebody a Snapchat, do a TikTok, put up a YouTube short, let them know the Snow Tribe are in the lead. We've got 45 minutes of football left. The first 15 have been mind-boggling. What will happen in the final 45? Snow Tribe up six nothing. It is not a Patterson bop, but more a Rahway shutdown as the Snow Tribe look to turn it from a light dusting into a blizzard as they get the ball to start our second quarter. I'm Matt Ryan, joined by Corey Hammond, and Jonathan Keel has been playing some decent football here in the first quarter, Corey. Exceptional. Exceptional. Because he's completed the pass on time when he's needed to. And if you look at the stats, that including that screen that he just faked right there, he's flag been all the, over this U defense. And it'll be a flag on the play more than likely on the offense, so they will move back five yards. A false at start. Minimum. There's that There's that bubble motion. I guess he was going uh, – you, you can't go back and then vertical when you're in motion. It's, it's not arena ball, which allows that. So that is going to be a false start. Uh, an offense and, and a misdirection. You thought it might be from the team in black and orange, not the team in orange and white. But credit the Snow Tribe so far. They're Is exactly the where they want to be. I mean, I love these jerseys, and, and I've gotten a lot of flack for saying so, but I'm not going to go back just because somebody made fun of me. <laughs> Turner in motion, handoff. No, Keel will keep it. Jonathan Keel avoiding defenders, but brought down inside the 45. And Jonathan Keel certainly not half-baked, killing him softly with the run. It'll be first down. If they're not going to take him seriously as a running threat, then they're making a huge mistake. Has he not proven enough, at least on the ground, for these defenses to try to stop him from running the ball? He goes with the bubble action fake and then takes it up the field himself. And he should be down right there. But look at that huss. For a man as many aged, as many years as he has in this league at the advanced age that he has, has put into the A7FL for him to be juking people like that still. Credit using, to Jonathan Keels. Using the right stick as much as possible. The snap, the handoff, cutting around. He'll evade the defender. 24 staying upright. We'll get to the 49 and brought out a play, and it will be. Looks like depending on the spot of the ball, we'll see what down it is. Looks like he got enough for the first because that's Suge again. And he was about to lose three, four, five yards on the initial handoff. Nowhere to go. He cuts it back, finds the seam, makes a man miss. And it's, it's the team, it's, it's the winter team, not the summer team right now. Talking about the snow tribe and just let, just let it snow at this point, right? Let it snow, let it snow, let it they're snow. The, and also, look, the time keeps running off the clock. We're and they're the team right now that's blocking and controlling the line of scrimmage. And they're the team right now that's not missing the tackles. And for me, in the playoffs, when these teams are really close, the team that misses tackles and then misses blocks is the team that's going to miss out on the second round. It'll be first and 10. They give him the first down at the 49-yard line. The handoff. Cutting into the 50. And that'll be a gain of about three. And that's a run from number 15, Reggie Blocker. Another A7FL vet. Finds a little bit of a seam. Keeps the ball moving forward. And that type of run play doesn't look like it's a great one on the stat sheet. But it's a consistent play. It gets you moving forward. You don't lose yardage. And it's exactly what Snow Tribe is looking for on their second offensive drive. We look inside the huddle here. Both of these teams looking to move on next week. If the U win, they play the BIC right back here in Asbury Park. If the Snow Tribe win, they take a trip up to Baltimore, and it will be the Animals playing the BIC. Yeah, no one is rooting right now harder for the Snow Tribe than the Animals who are looking <laughs> to avoid driving to the game because both of those matchups are going to be tough teams. And a snap on second and eight. Keel. Throws it over the hands of the receiver, and it will be third down. And it looks like the U defense may have gotten a bit of their bearings, Corey. Well, uh, one one play, one incompletion. I'm not going to give him full credit for that. Jonathan Keels does get the ball out before he gets sacked. It was to a receiver in a place where only he could catch it, even though I saw a guy dive behind it and maybe <laughs> almost intercept the ball on a, on a ridiculous play if it was going to be made. But that's something that we expect from guys on the U defense. 
But again, third and long is what I said earlier on in this game, a situation that Snowtrap sometimes struggles in. But when I said that, they were able to dial up a play, a nice, easy completion, and, and a great blocking in front of the quick screen on the bubble to Shane Turner on that first drive. Let's see what they go here on their second third and long. And third and eight. Keel thrown, swatted down, and it will be fourth down. Rashad Knight there at the defensive end position, and you saw Marcel Chapman, pretty much Keel's go-to guy all season. He runs the hook at the top of your screen, and the ball's just not in a position where it can get past the defensive end. And it'll be interesting to see what Snow Tribe does on fourth and eight. And now the Snow Tribe will throw it off here. It'll be number three, Marcel Chapman, throwing it off, and he will top this one out into the end zone, an interesting throw there. That's technically a live ball, and it will get out of bounds. But it'll be first and 10, and it's that man at quarterback. And it's Kareen Moon, a.k.a. Silky Smooth, after Croslin was unable to score on the first two drives. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the A7FL. The handoff, and there's a big oh run downfield. Powers through and brought down. That's Daryl Luck moving like a truck down to Jersey Turnpike. It'll be first and 10. And no disrespect to Daryl Luck, a longtime performer for the U and a, and a real solid running back that's always been able to get yards for them. But if you saw the lane that that, that Daryl Luck truck drove through, me and Matt Ryan are getting 15 yards on that one. <laughs> great play, great design, but that's that Deshaun Johnson pull that you see here he goes in motion oh that boss is offside of course <laughs> it'll be first and 15 the handoff powering through again will not get the first down but will get to pass the initial line of scrimmage and it will be second down <laughs> second and about nine and poor rondo look at his jersey <clears throat> number nine that's a guy with i think four or five interceptions on the year number nine that's ron brown rondo but that was number 58, Lamel Miller, who lost a lot of weight, by the way. And, and Deshaun Johnson just double-teaming him all the way into the back of the third level of the defense, 15 yards away from the play, and that's why it was another great run for the U. It'll be second and eight. Eight and, and a half minutes left to go in the half. And since Rob's not here on his birthday, I'll pause myself for saying double-team. Here's Truck again. And they, another handoff to Daryl Luck. Luck almost gets the ball stripped, but will get brought down at the 49. First down, Patterson. To the championship. Just look at the hole here. Yes, Ruben has a chance to make an arm tackle there, but you're not going to make it on a guy like Daryl Luck or Mayweather or Snags. It'll be first and 10, 745 left to go. That's Willie Mayweather, Willie Easterling set up, and there you see Pat Coburn in motion. Easterling set up to the left of Kareem Moon. Play action. Moon will keep it. He's immediately put under pressure. He'll cut to the sideline. Moon will run out of play inside the 45. They might mark him at the 44, and it will be second down for Patterson. And that's the kind of play that you expect from the U. They've dominated with that handoff. They go play action with the quarterback, and even though the front, the, you know, the initial point of attack, the left side of the field wasn't there, Moon was able to slip out of it, slide, and did not take it to the house. No, he did not. He, he didn't slip slide. He slipped and then, and then slide. slide. He slid. He slowed. <laughs> he S-L-O-D-E. Is that, is that English? No. Well, it's second and five. Hashtag slowed. Drop your slows in the chat. Second and five. Four in the box for the Rahway Snow Tribe. They'll hand off again. And Ron Brown in on the tackle alongside Negron. That'll get to the 40. Let's we'll see if they'll give him the first down. It's either third and one or first and ten. And thank goodness it wasn't J-Rock running the ball there or his whole weave would have got snatched. Good thing Willie Mayweather's only wearing a little bit of headgear. But it'll bring up third and short, and that's exactly if, if you're the you and you have the offensive line that you do, third and one, third and two, that's exactly where you want to be on offense. In motion, the handoff. 
Pushes to the outside. Easterling gets around a defender. Can peel off, and uh, Negron not able to hold on. But it will be a first down inside the 25. And the Patterson U continuing to drive on their third of the afternoon, looking to put up their first score. And after a great run by Mayweather, normally we'd focus in on the running back and how great he looked on that play. But again, watch the seal here from 76. That's just how you call and execute run plays in the A7FL. You got a pulling <laughs> 300 and, you know, we'll, we'll be nice, five. And by five, I mean 350. Pound guy moving at athletic speed, sealing the edge. You're going to get a first down. First and ten. In motion, the handoff, and <laughs> Isaac Negron not letting that happen again. No more habitual line step. And pardon me, those number 20. That's Najee Hall. Najee he, Hall. He, he went low. He went underneath the, somebody's I legs saw, to get I there. Saw the in head, there. I saw the head gimmick, and then I was like, is that is that the cap that he wears? Or Oh, that's Najee. My bad. I'm running on like four hours sleep. Hey, man. And we got another game. Oh, buddy. Speaking of the 7 o'clock, we, we get to see the Insomniacs up close and personal. Sometimes people call him Nightmare X. I'm going to call him Toshinori Yagi. Look it up. It's an anime reference. He calls himself Shan Yu from Mulan, but he is a great wall of China. But it'll bring up second and ten here after a good stop. Play action. And that is Kareem Moon on second and ten. Caught in bounds. Will they give it to him? And that and caught by number six, Daryl Luck. They will, and it'll be first down, and the clock will continue to run. And when you see Kareem Moon in at quarterback, and he calls a play action, and he boots away, you better be prepared to guard a wheel on the backside. Now, normally it's going to be number two, Dot Boss, running that wheel. But there they fake to Daryl Truck Luck, and they go right back to him. Watch the wheel here. He's not covered at all. And, and, have and Moon final. knows that, okay, final. In Florida... The O-Town Orange defeated the Orlando Ghosts 40-25. to They will move on next week to play the Tampa Nightcrawlers and Dominique Rogers-Cromartie. That's right. If you missed on social media or on the three-on-one podcast, Dominique Rogers-Cromartie is in the A7FL. That Dominique Rogers-Cromartie? That do former first-round draft pick, multiple-time All-Pro and Pro Bowler. The guy that the entire season we've been calling him Dr. C. C. Yes, Dr. C was, in fact, not someone under a mask, but, in fact, Dominique Rogers-Cromartie. I'm not sure what that is. And it's not Dr. Z. It's Dr. C. D-R-C, Dominique Rogers Camardi. Nightcrawler. A7FL player. And uh, Matt. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's a wild road to Bullhead City on July 23rd. And uh, next week is going to be very telling across the league. We have the Ohio and Florida championships, and we have the divisional rounds in Nevada and Los Angeles, and, of course, in the Northeast, Maryland and New Jersey. Moon on first and goal. The handoff to Easterling. Mm. Easterling will slip and tie this one up. Six to six. Willie Easterling putting six on the board. Touchdown, Patterson. That is a Thanos drive because that drive, Matt, was inevitable. After you watched the blocking on the first play of that drive and you saw the personnel come in and you saw that Moon was basically calming them down and going to the, you know, let's just run the ball, Patterson, you offense. As the U look to get the championship point here in the playoffs, which could be huge as we've seen the Snow Tribe are able to drive the ball so far in this game. The snap in trouble. Moon surrounded by orange uniforms. Throws it! Caught! Brought down, but a flag on the field. That's Henrock. And it's on the U. Let's see. Oh, it's going to be offensive pass interference. There was a reason why he was so open. We see here <clears throat> on the replay. And you go out for a pass, big man. Deshaun Johnson blocks for a half second and goes. <laughs> Going for it. The and one there's Henrock again. Tapped. Did he hold on to it? Did he hold on to it? Did they count it? They better have. And they do. They count it. They you get oh, the lead. It's and seven Abdul to six. Shabazz has been hiding all year, so he didn't get head topped. And a first attempt at him, and Henrock up top. And that's a lead for the Patterson U here with 339 left. It's a one point game. Throws it back out there alongside Tyron Brown. So he is out there. He, and that won't he, be couldn't, he just couldn't take off. And he will 
Keep going. The whistle hasn't blown. But spin down and brought down at the 29. That's the the cheetah, Tyshawn Robinson. And Snag Sosa stepping back on the field. Snow, Sosa's out there and manages to snag the cheetah before he gets going, huh? Huh? Ooh, huh? Ooh. Huh? Ooh. All right, yeah, that was bad. Tomatoes. But, so it'll be interesting to see here as, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, the Snow Tribe get the ball at half. They do. Snow Tribe get the ball at half. They have two timeouts and a two-minute warning. So if they if they're able to manage the clock here and get a point, get a score on the board and keep the U from scoring to respond, they could take two a two-point lead. Here's Keels. Keel keeps it, moves up field. Yes. Jonathan Keel gets the first down and brought down. And a flag on the play and a player down. And I'm not sure what the penalty is going to be on. Hopefully everybody gets back up. But we cannot say enough about the way that Jonathan Keels is, is attacking this U defense, specifically in the, in the ground game. He looks 10 years younger with all these shifty moves. <laughs> we'll see here again on the replay. Yep. And that's a mere Chick Morris. That's no, that's no guy that usually misses tackles. That's a A7FL legend, number 20 for the year. Amir Chick Morris, since the beginning of this league, he's been a top player. The flag seemed to have been on the Patterson U, so the Snow Tribe will move on up to a new destination, as Marvin Gaye would say. Legal hands to the face is the call. Whose face? Uh, not my face. Not mine either Jonathan today. Keel's face. It was a John, uh, the flag was on Jonathan Keel. Rocking the pork shop sideburns. Flag on the field. Dead play, so that will probably be on the Snow Tribe. False start on the Snow Tribe, so it'll be first and 15. They try to hurry it up a little bit, catch themselves a little bit off guard, and after the penalty from the U, the Snow Tribe return serve. It'll be first and 15. <laughs> and Batson frustrated with that. But again, if you look at the greater context of this game, now a lot is going to play out. But if, if the Snow Tribe are able to drive the ball down, get it in the end zone one way or another, take the lead and then get the ball back, they're using the clock in the situation to their advantage because, unfortunately, the U took too long you know who, to get started in this game. You know if I'm who I would be right now, I would want watching this game? The North Vegas Kryptonite. They play in our 7 o'clock game. Watch how to, f to work against a top team and play against expectation and limit possessions because that's what the Snow Tribe have been doing. The and snap. it looks, we'll see what Keel's got. Keel avoids the tackle and then brought down the second time. And it will be second and a lot more than 15. Tackle on the play by number 14, Marcel Bates, a.k.a. Booby Miles. Tap outs, tap outs, tap outs for Booby Miles. And ask, ask Rob week seven how those tap outs tap you out. It was a pretty strong little drink there. But he's able to get the sack because, look, when you're able to corral Keels and keep him in the pocket, you're putting your defense in the best position that they have to succeed. He saw he saw a long crack in and the deep And one thing that's tough line. is when you attack a quarterback on his right, his throwing arm, he can't go with the full rotation on the throw. So Keels climbs the pocket, tries to find some space to let go of the ball. And guess who's there? You know, 340-pound athlete, <laughs> Booby Miles. And he saw a long crack in the back of that offensive line. Yeah, there, there's there was a fault in the in the the a fault line in the the design there. So this is actually a, a relatively decent time management situation for the U if they can stop Keels here on the sweep. The snap Keels will keep it and he will be brought down at the 44. Still a little bit away and at the 2 minute warning down 1, Jonathan Keels will see third down. And a long way to go. And and that's what the you were kind of counting on there is that it's now third and approximately 17. It's a really great situation for them because unless it's Keels really breaking out of the pocket and running downfield, the Snow Trap don't necessarily have a lot of answers for this situation. Not like a lot of teams do, to be honest. Let's Let's be fair. There's not a lot of plays in the playbook for third and 16 that you can basically expect to hit more often than not. But if you're the U, you got to prove that you can stop Keels when he decides to run the ball because every every time that he's decided that he wants to get yardage, he's given somebody or somebody else a hus-hus to remember. 
Third and 16, like Austin and the King of the Ring. Two minutes left to go. Can they make something happen? Keel will get on his bicycle. Jonathan yes. Keel gets through one defender, but brought down at the 49 near the initial line of scrimmage, and it will be fourth down. And the U call another timeout. Smart again, play. again, clock management. We were talking about what it would be like for the Snow Tribe if they were able to manage the clock, but it's the U with their well-placed timeouts using the two-point, uh, excuse me, the two-minute warning to their advantage. And, and the Snow Tribe look to pin the U back. And folks, after this game, we still have another one two hours from now. A long way to go until we head to the Silver State. But at 7 p.m., it will be the Vegas Insomniacs taking on the North Vegas Kryptonite. Me and Corey will be bringing that action to you live on A7FL.TV. Casey Cox and company will be doing it on Fox 5.2. And it will be a three-on-one return now for number 28 of the Patterson U. That's Stephen Jones Jr. And it will be fourth and... Well, not fourth and one, but it will be a three-on-one throw-off. An untimed down in the Patterson U with one timeout and 151 left to go. And a great look there on the three-on-one throw-off. And we see how the defense goes against Stephen Jones Jr. Jones Jr. brought down at the 15. A great job there by the special teams of the Rahway Snow Tribe. And it was Jamal Williams, the the alternate quarterback that we've seen at times this year. And his he really, on the three-on-one in the punt situation, where it's a, a change of possession after uh, a non-conversion on the first downs, right? You want to get it out of bounds. He, he keeps it in bounds, but the, the three-on-one team is able to cover and make sure that that doesn't turn into a mistake. And another big play from Marcel Chapman, who is getting to the sideline, looking to get a little bit of a breather. <laughs> And it will be first and 10, minute 51 left to go. So the one thing that, that you kind of take away from the Patterson U offense is that ability to run that power run formation. So you see Carlos Crosland back in at quarterback. They go four wide, trips to the bottom of your screen, and we'll see what they can do here looking to pass the ball with 151 left. Waiting on the play in motion, the snap, pressure. That one almost intercepted and complete intended for Pat Coburn off the hands on the quick screen. When we saw Carlos Carlson earlier this season in a big time game, he didn't look as out of sorts as he looks right now. That is a, a, a relatively off target throw on a quick screen to Pat Coburn, who I've seen firsthand, make something out of nothing. And even though it falls relatively innocently to the turf incomplete. Matt, you said it. That could have been a huge turnover. Second and 10. The snap. Croslin back in at quarterback. The screen again. That's the number 23. Sadiq That's Pitts. Sadiq Pitts. Sadiq Pitts cutting down the sideline and pushed out a play at the 44. Minute 35 now left to go. And number me. six, Abdul Shabazz is patting himself on the chest because he obviously missed the tackle there. He was aggressive on the quick screen and thought he could make a play to stop it for a no gain, but credit Sadiq Pitts, makes the spin move, gets up the sideline, and out of bounds for not only a first down, but a huge chunk of yardage. And the U are moving. Little over 90 seconds left to go in the half. They have the quick screen at the bottom of your screen again on the same corner. Will I, they go with I, that again? I take it. In motion, the handoff. 93 seconds left to go in the half, and that's a tackle, and that won't get a first down and a flag on the play. And when you make a tackle that low in this league, you have to attempt to wrap. Unfortunately, Rondo, who is taking on a big man in hard body, and he has that nickname for a reason, it's going to be a penalty because he didn't go for the wrap below the legs. And again, the U are moving, and that penalty will stop the clock, which is huge. And this is not what you want if you're the Rahway Snow Tribe. You don't want technique to be the thing that cost you. He lowered that shoulder, did Ron Brown, and he'll get flagged on that one. Good call by Ryan Spadola. And you see where the U have the ball. They, they have over a minute left now, and they're at the 35, exactly what they want to be doing. Can and Carl tight coverage at the top of your screen, and that trips. Can Carlos Croslin get some redemption after the first two drives? And Kareen Moon coming in. The throw, deep downfield, out of reach, and it will be second down intended for number three. That is the young man, Henry Smith, Henrock, intended receiver, almost had that one, but out of reach. 
Yeah, they've been they've been going to him pretty consistently here. We haven't really seen him all season, but you could see that he has the explosiveness and he was open. Croslin with pressure in his face isn't able to deliver there and it'll bring up second down, but you know, even plays like that that don't hit, they make the defense adjust. And if you're going to you're going to cover a, a wide receiver tight, they're eventually going to have to complete those to really make the Schno Tribe, you know, feel their presence on those types of plays. But on second down, let's see what Carlos Croslin has. Minute 23 left to go. 7-6 to six off the screen. Kept in play, and that was Kareen Moon on the catch. And they will call it out of bounds. And a minute 18 left to go, and they'll move up field. It'll be second down. Smart play there to get a little bit of yardage, make it a more manageable third down. Third down, pardon me. Second but down. The third down. It's a more manageable third down, and because he's able to get out of bounds, the clock stays in your favor. They still have the one timeout, and at the top of your screen, Pat Coburn. And Maybe the matchup you're him. looking at. They are playing him tight there, and you see Kareem Moon set up there, and there's the screen. He catches it. He bobbles it. There's number three. He'll do the end around. That's Henry Smith. Henrock trying to make something go. He keeps it in bounds. Oh, they keep him in bounds, though, when a minute six left to go, and they'll bring him in around the 11-yard line. The quick screen to the one side of the field is absolutely dead to rights, but credit the young man finding the seam, getting all the way to the other side of the field because the over-pursuit from the Snow Tribe was initially great here. They're all over it. Nowhere to go, but Finds you got to find around. a way to make it, make the play, and that's Isaac Malaria, and number 30, who is a great defensive end, but in the open field against a guy like Henrock, he's just outmatched speed for speed. And first and 10, they have the, the ability at the 11-yard line to get the first down before the end zone. But the clock is ticking with 27 seconds left. And you saw Pat Coburn asking if Nigel Hatcher was wearing velvet or not. And you see it on the play incomplete. And it will be second down. The clock under a minute left to play. We yeah. see Pat Coburn there. The, he has been an intended receiver a few times today. 23 seconds left to go. A one-point lead for the Patterson U. And they were looking for the quick slant, but Carlos Krausen was not able to find an open receiver because number five, Tevin Shaw, a Kansas grad. He played his, his college football in the Big 12. He's able to get that press coverage on Pat Coburn and not able to find any space. They were looking for a flag there, but since it's inside of five yards, nothing's called. And I'll bring up second and 10 at the 11-yard line. Do you, do you still have that timeout? Watch Negron coming in. He is pressing the throw incomplete. Coburn looking for a flag. Don't see any yellow hankies thrown, and it will be third down. When Croslin is in at quarterback, he does look like he's a little bit out of sync, and Pat Coburn is upset at the placement of the ball there. I'm not sure who he's upset with, but it's not his quarterback, so he's talking to somebody. I think he's talking to Ryan Spinola. Eh. Who would be a ref, and that's probably right, but I was going to say that. <laughs> but with 16 seconds and two plays to put 10 yards or six points on the board, Croslin has found himself again having to dig something out on a, on a deep drive. On a, They've gotten stopped twice with Croslin behind center. The pressure, the throw, Henry Smith catching it. Smith brought down, ball comes loose. They're not calling, nope, no touchdown, no touchdown. They'll wave the play off. It was a complete play, so the clock should continue to run unless the U called the timeout. Well, it looks like they're going to call a timeout, but also it's really close to see if it's a first down. The first down was at the one-yard line, so if they're going to give him the ball at the one-yard right, line. Right on the outside. It looks like right outside the one. It's either fourth and inches or first and goal. Let's see where he goes down. Great blocking from Moon out in front, but also Brandon Hambrick has to make the play there, and he does. He reaches the ball out and should be spotted inside the one-yard line, but it's clearly not a touchdown. It will be first down. They will give him the first down. With eight seconds left to play, the U call their last timeout, and a team that we would have thought might have been playing more like the animals in our first game, the, the narratives might have flipped here between these two games, Corey. Yeah, and what we thought was going to be the tight game was a blowout and was 21-0 early. GG. 
<laughs> GG uh, EO, right? Because they're the East Orange Renegades, so good game. But now, with eight seconds, one yard to go, the U, even though it's smart to go with a quick throw here, they're going to go heavy They'll and hand punch off. it in. Touchdown, Patterson. And they will put six on the board and make it a 13-6 game. But Rahway gets the ball with eight seconds. They have Tyshawn Robinson, the returner. They have two timeouts. It'll be interesting to see how this materializes. But it is 13-6, it seems, with the Rahway, the Rahway Snow Tribe down by seven. And hold on, I heard some whistles there, so they might have blown it dead before they actually called it because they're going right back to the one-yard so line. So no touchdown on the play, must have been a reset, the snap, handoff, cuts around to the end zone, touchdown, Patterson! And they fake the play going right back to it, and guess who it is? Silky smooth, too many moves, Moon, and when you go for it all on the dive to the right side of your defense and you leave the left open, guess who's going to find the end zone? That's a great drive from the U to take the lead there and, and supplant it 13-6. to six, Four seconds left. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah, this, is, this is a football game, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't expect this to be that close. We expected it to be closer than expected, but not this close. 13 to 6 your score but the Snow Tribe not only do they get the ball after this but they get the ball at half that untimed down it'll be and you see Snag Sosa playing in on special teams and right now it's a right now it's a 7 point game so if they're able to get this 1 point attempt that would bring it up to an Snap. 8 point game the throw by Moon and they will count that one. It is 14 to 6. An eight-point lead now. Rahway needs to get on the board on this or their next possession. And if they want to tie the game or keep it there, there's Tevin Shaw. He's, looks like he's got a little bit of a thing he's got to work through. And here's the touchdown. You go play action. Everybody thinks it's going one way. Moon goes the other way. And the U seem to find their stride here as we're getting close to halftime. But with four seconds left, the Snow Tribe have a chance with a cheetah. Ant Live and, and, and Big Mike for the Snow Tribe, they might have something up their sleeve. I will say that I've never seen this guy. Axton Cedarquist. Yeah, I have never that's seen him. That's his name. I, that's his actual name. Axton Cedarquist, the tight end, a.k.a. Big Axe. Yeah, exactly. We'll see if you... Replace the X for an S eventually. They hand in this game. it off and pushing through, getting around, and that will be how we end the half. But a strong run from the Snow Tribe will set them up to have the ball at the end of the half. 14 to 6. We're going to take a brief timeout. You're going to see how we got here. We're going to be back in five minutes. Hang out, enjoy the highlights, keep the chat spicy. We'll be back on the other side. 14 to 6 to you in the lead. So if they can get the ball out of his hands quick and get some on-time plays, this Snow Tribe offense can stay on, on target. And we'll see if Tyshawn Robinson, the cheetah, can break free on this three-on-one and maybe spark another bit of fireworks into this game. Well, we don't want to see sparks turn into embers and melt snow, especially if you're from Rahway. It's an untimed down. The ball comes loose out of the hands of Robinson on the initial catch, but Tyshawn Robinson will cut towards the sideline and get brought down inside the 20. It'll be first and 10 around the 19. As the Patterson U defense look to pacify Robinson, it'll be first and 10 for Jonathan Keelanco. And as we, we got the close-up there for uh, some of our viewers at home of the uh, most famous forehead in today's game, um, the Snow Tribe take the field, and Jonathan Keels has shown that the, his veteran presence and what he's able to do consistently at the quarterback position, he's been doing a great job so far, and this eight-point differential is exactly where I think the Rawway Snow Tribe wanted to be. Maybe not where all of us expected where they would be at half, but that's exactly the type of differential that I think that they wanted coming into this game. Anything can happen in the second half, but with this first drive, I think if they can get a couple of plays here moving in the right direction, keep the momentum or build on it, they put the U in a tough position because if the U is only going to run the ball, they're not going to be able to put up a ton of points and get separation. And that's exactly where the Snow Tribe want to be. 
first and 10 on the 19 yard line. Keel, flag on the play and offsides on the defense. That's a way to get yardage, right? Yeah. Let the other guys give it to you. <laughs> and shout outs to Scoob, by the way. Jamar Franklin, a longtime player in this league, and, and Amir Chick Morris is actually wearing his jersey. So other than the uh, the, the look-alike situation um, in which there's a character from the Jungle Book, which we might uh, reference for my guy Jamar Franklin, um, the, the official answer to your question, though, we've seen on the chat is no. You will not be asked ever to speak on A7FL Airways. But keep going in the chat, my guy. And we're so excited for you guys to be a part of the chat and a part of the conversation. If you're not watching on A7FL TV, give a call to the voicemail line for the 3 on one 317 A7FL. That's 516-387-2635. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. 13.59 and counting here. It'll be first down. Snap, and Keel will keep it. Cuts inside, will get to around the, tw past the 25 after the penalty to the 28, a gain of about three, and it will be second down. And uh, on that run, Keels exposes a little bit more than he wanted to maybe on the uh, U defense as we saw Burton with the tackle. He's having a... He's having a situation similar to a halftime performance by uh, a certain Jackson, unfortunately, there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, Ooh. Burton. Hey, we, let's get that calendar out soon. Second and one. <laughs> In motion. Real quick, let's talk about the courage it takes for Keels to just run into the middle of and that U defense, and he does it again. Drives ahead, and it looks like they'll give him the first down. I don't think people. I don't think people talk about enough how much courage it takes to even step on this field in a, in a, in a especially in a playoff situation like that. But for Jonathan Keels, a, a quarterback that isn't known for being like enormous, like D Fox, which we might see later on for the Force, or or ex extremely super fast as some of the quarterbacks in this league. The, the amount of courage to, to just run into the teeth of a defense like the U is on a next human level that I don't think people understand. You see Tyron Brown, the honey badger on defense. And, and to shout out Jamar Franklin even further, even I am not brave enough to do what you are suggesting in the chat. First and 10. The snap, Keel throws it, caught. Get to the 40! Fifth point season getting a fifth point first down! That's Devin Roman! That's Devin Roman, and if you haven't seen him all year making a play, it's a shame because he's that type of tight end. And if you had Devin Roman with one of the best husses of today's game, you just made a lot of money in that place where we're going to see at <laughs> 7 o'clock. Look at him running down the field. Great play from the tight end. And Keels had no idea he was about to get huffed right there. Huff! No need to weave through the defense that time. He locked in and got the first down. And it's now an opportunity for Jonathan Keel, 11.34 and counting. And that's the type of pass play that we need to continue to call for Keels. He is effective and accurate in that sense of the play. And it's the first snap, and 10 again. The handoff. Cuts and finds the opportunity. Plowing through, we'll get to the 40. We'll plow to the 30. Going to the 30, trying to get there. Stays upright, brought down at the 31 yard line. And what a run there for number 24, Marquise Mouchette, AKA Shug. And as hard as he just ran, he's gonna get a chance to, to, to figure out the situation with his shysty. But that's a great run from a really great and, and very consistent running back all season for the Snow Tribe. Except for that one game against BIC where there was a hurricane and, you know, he got a, he got a little bit of a nap in the car situation. But and It looks like he got caught in the eye. Yeah, I mean, everybody's out there trying to make, take him down, and it's a tough job. So, but a first and ten, though. The handoff to boat. Batson. Batson will get past the line of scrimmage and get a gain of about two. And this, uh, this uh, Snow Tribe Orange Crush run, that Orange Crush rush working for them so far. Listen, Rob warned us how much fight this Snow Tribe was going to bring, and everybody knows my vendetta against them. Let's be, let's be fair. Let's just call it out for what it is. But I love the way that they're playing. They are playing with, with an Omega's level heart right now, and they're good. 
<laughs> They're very good. Did you and just we've say always the words talk- Omega's level heart when you're the quarterback or were the quarterback of the Omegas? Well, I also was cut from the Snow Tribe, That's so there's fair. a lot going on there here. There is a, more more drama than the Vanderpump rules, and right now Keels finding himself in the kingdom of the Patterson U defense, the long crack in the offensive line leading to third down. Yeah, uh, and, and and Ra Mills, uh, a center for the Renegades, is usually our biggest you know, fault line. It's a San Andreas situation out there uh, talking about uh, <laughs> uni- uniform malfunctions. But to finish my point, what, what, what Rob warned us of what the, Sh- the Schnow Tribe was going to bring to this game, because let's face it, like you said, Matt, regular seasons thrown out the window. Nobody cares about what happened weeks ago. Right now it's a fresh start, and what the Schnow Tribe have shown is they've put it together in a way that a team that all of us expect to be at least in the upper echelon of the conversation of championship contenders in the U, this Snow Tribe team has been able to match them play for play. Here's the Keel's. snap, Keel rolls out to his right. Jonathan Keel will cut up field. He'll stay in bounds, uh. and he will go to the 21. He will eat that from Kells Gallimore, and he will move the ball downfield and a flag on the play. Keel's to, Keels to Kells? Is, the, is, is something going on? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> wow. Listen, Jay Keels balling right now, period, the end. This is who he is. This is his game. He's not going to throw it for 700 yards in a game. No, never. But what he is going to do is he's going to fight every single yard, and the Snow Tribe are following him. They're listening to Big Rob, and on his birthday, if you do anything, <laughs> listen to Big Rob. A shout-out to John Kessler, uh, who... Came ba- bearing gifts. Very, very gifty at gifts. Times. Ver- much gifts. For All Big Rob, gifts. but Big Rob not with us. Celebrating his birthday at home today. In motion to snap. Keel on first and ten. Keel will get on his bicycle. Jonathan Keel will keep the ball. He'll go again and run right into Gallimore. And that play was so similar. It looked like a replay of the previous yeah, play. It was. And it a was. Replay. We're just so used to Keels just making that play. It's just become commonplace. We see a replay, and we just think it's a new play. Shout-outs to our our, uh, our guys working the scenes here. Second and eight. There's the dot boss, of course. Mark. And, of course, he's going to make a play eventually in this game on both sides of the ball. One of the best two-way threats in our league. Second and eight for Keels. Second and eight. And then Keel will cut again, and he will get to inside the five. And tomorrow morning, Jay Keels is going to wake up and remember all of the plays of this game, but right now, none of them matter. He is playing as hard as I've ever seen him play. And there is a will to win in that young man that I think that he might just be able to do it. Now, I'm not going to go out and call that the Snow Tribe are going to win this game. But the Patterson U, looking at their next week of matchup, the week after that, hypothetically the week after that, we've talked about their road hypothetically to the A7FL championship. And we've almost talked about, except for Rob on his birthday, how, how we can maybe even skip the Snow Tribe. Well, guess what? In this week one of the playoff matchup that they drew in the sixth seed, and also look they're getting they're, everything that they could have hoped for. And look what they're doing, Corey. They have wasted not over nine, almost nine minutes now, over eight minutes on the clock. It'll be third and goal, and it will get within the one-yard line. And there's going to be a fourth and goal coming up that we never thought would be the as calling important a timeout. for the Snow Tribe. Wow, calling a timeout here. Patterson, you. When you look at rosters in the A7FL, Matt, a lot of times you'll look at who the guys are and you'll say, who on this team has has playoff-level experience, has championship-level experience? Well, the U definitely does. They're champions in their own right. But if you look at the Snow Tribe, look at number seven on their offensive line, playing his heart out right now, Skittles. Some might call him <laughs> Ant Live. He's a champion, and he knows what it takes to win in this league. And yes, at times, Snow Tribe haven't been able to put it together in some of their games against the top opponents that they face in the Northeast. 
But I think in general, no one looked at the Schnow tribe and said, this is a totally garbage team. Let's throw them out in the trash. But I think that even the you, definitely the media, definitely me, have looked past the Schnow tribe team. And what they've shown so far is that that was a huge mistake by not only myself, which was obvious, but maybe this Patterson U defense, offense, this entire roster, because right now on fourth and goal, Jonathan Keels has a chance to pull within a couple of points of the He's Patterson U. He's not even U, the one with the ball. And it's, it's almost the fourth oh, and quarter. Oh, they jumped the line. They jumped the line, and it looks like number five, Jarris Rogers. No, they, that oh, was they actually jumped. J-Rock with the pineapple head making the smart play, and it's a false start on the Snow Tribe. I should have kept hating. Maybe uh. that was the, their fuel to keep succeeding. And it will be fourth and goal on the seven-yard line. They lose five yards. And with it 14-6, to six, it is a make-or-break situation here for Rahway. Let me just say this. If I'm rooting for the Snow Tribe, you know their quarterback is playing with his heart out and on the field. And credit to Jake Keels for one of the best performances of his career so far. A guy who came back because his kids wanted to see him play football. Something that we've seen from... And who Lightning. also quit mid-season. Yeah. But he was welcomed back. And now they're following his lead. And he's leading them close to the promised land. Fourth and goal. Fourth and goal. The throw tipped up. Intercepted in the end zone. Oh, hard body. Why'd you do it? And brought down. And you can see Keels dejected. But it's still a close game, but now the Snow Tribe defense are going to have to put in a lot of work here after burning a lot of clock to get it to 632, and it's still a one-score game. And we see here... What a great drive, and how much time did they take off the clock from Snow Tribe? They were doing everything that they needed to do to have a chance against a championship-level opponent in the U to start this second half, and credit to the Snow Tribe because that was a great drive except for that last play. But after the, the offsides penalty on fourth and seven, they had him too. That Keels that just can't get the ball high enough to get over Hard Body, who has made so many plays in this league. That's just a mundane play for him at this point. And it'll bring up first down for the U. And the U now in total control. It's up to the Snow Tribe defense to get them the ball back. Keeping Croslin in the game here. 5.57 left to go in the third quarter. Clock continuing to run. The handoff to Snag Sosa. Snag Sosa brought down at the 20-yard line. Quick gain for him. And it will be second down. And that two running back set when they go in the shotgun you know that the first play that they're going to run almost every single time is that easy lead. So credit the offensive line because when... when first. Yeah, because when you run that play and the defense knows exactly where it's going to go, it's up to your offensive lineman to overcome the defense knowing what the play call is. And when you see my guy, Deshaun Johnson, right there on the right edge, if they run behind him, it's likely going to be a good play. Correction, second down and the handoff to Snack Sosa again, who will get inside... The 25-yard line. And again, the reason that play goes for positive yardage is the edge is sealed by number 76. And if you're the U, your formula for the rest of this playoffs is likely follow that large man, and it's likely going to be successful for most of the, the plays in this playoff. So credit the Snow Tribe for doing what they can, but when the U has committed to running the ball with their big offensive line, with their stable of running backs, they've shown that they're on another level. First and 10. Smoke in motion, the handoff, and Croslin will keep it. Carlos Croslin will cut down field. Carlos Croslin will keep it in his right hand. He'll cut inside. Bye, Being bye. chased down. Carlos Croslin, they call him Pablo because he's painting a picture. Touchdown, Patterson. And as great of a run, by Carlos Croslin as that was. It was set up by the running backs who are unstoppable on that play. And Dot Boss, who is a playmaker in his own right, getting down the field, getting the blocks multiple times to take a big run and turn it into a touchdown run. Check out number two on this play. He's not going to get the ball in his hands. Huff is not on his team who will usually pitch it to him, but he gets the initial block on Rondo and then peels back to make sure it's a touchdown on Shabazz. 
The U take the lead after a great drive from the Snow Tribe to start this half. The, the Naruto run, the Naruto run really set the tone after the touchdown. And, and Matt, for you to make an anime <laughs> reference right now is making me super happy. But for all the Snow Tribe fans at home and everyone in Rawway, except for people in the penitentiary, they are feeling upset about that great run from Carlos Crosland. And just like that, you see how hard it is for the Snow Tribe to get yardage against this U defense. For the Patterson U to get that easy of a touchdown on a play like that, it just shows you where this game was always eventually going to head up. Score would wait on an update from Los Angeles. And it is a extra point opportunity. Five point, op one point attempt from the five. Moon in, he'll keep it, he'll throw, and that one is Caught by the dot boss, of course, Markeith Williamson making it 21 to 6. And when you run out in front of your quarterback to make that many blocks to ensure a touchdown, why not throw it to him on the extra point? And that's exactly what you expect from a championship level team. Back against the wall, fourth and goal, they make the interception. And then Carlos Crosland, not his best game so far, but his best run of the season. 21 to six, the Patterson U take the lead. And Matt, I'm gonna take this one. If you know what social media is, and you likely do because you're watching this league, check us out. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I may have switched two of those up, but I don't have all of those apps on my phone, so give me a break. And you more are, no, you were right. You were right. Oh, I was right? You were right. Most importantly, check out those apps. Use your finger, tap them on your phone, and you'll get some of the best highlights football has to offer anywhere. That's the A7FL on socials across your phone. Download those apps now and also download the Unify app. And we'll have more information on that a little bit later on in the broadcast. In Ohio, the heist in the lead, 27 to 7. And a pass completed outside of the end zone in the sand, and someone is dancing, and it looks like Seth Chambers. And it's a three on one throw off now for the Rahway Snow Tribe. That'll bounce into the end zone and bounce to the back of the end zone. And it looked like number 24, Marquise Mouchette, was going to be the one who ran that one back. See, Shug has been wearing that shiesty all season, and he just, just lowered it right there as I'm saying it. But I was about to say that I would not recognize him if he dr dropped off my Uber Eats later. Um, but there he goes. He had a chance to return, and a lot of conversation there as we get geared up for this Rawway Snow Tribe drive to answer but after going as long as they did on the last drive and falling short on fourth and goal, every single thing that the Snow Tribe have done so far in this game feels almost like a moot point after such an easy touchdown from the U. But don't get it twisted. With 4.17 left in the third quarter and as great as Jonathan Keels has been able to run the ball at the quarterback position, don't be surprised if he somehow finds a seam and is able to make a big play himself. Maybe Keel. even with his arm. And it's still a close game. It's closer than we expected. It's closer Way than... Way closer than last game that we thought was going to be yeah. a GG. And now, Jonathan Keel will send a wide receiver that's Eddie Pettyote in motion. Keel throws this one deep and almost picked out by number 23, Sadiq Pitts. And it will be second down. And that's the dangerous position that the Raw Snow Tribe finds themselves in. Down two scores... You know, most people, if you're familiar at all with football, once you get down the two scores, you feel that pressure and calling more pass plays and calling more of a high-tempo offense. If the Rawway Snow Tribe get away from what's been working for them, they're playing right into the U's hands. And although, yes, you got to go play action every once in a while and go up top, that's not the strength of what Jonathan Keels can do. And even though he had a wide receiver open down the field, I want to see the Snow Tribe stick to what they're good at. And if they call a nice, easy, simple pass for Keels to complete, so far he's shown that he can. Not a lot of use of Mouchette here on this drive. It'll be second down. Keel will keep it. Jonathan Keel will get past the first Huss. level, and he'll get to around the 26-yard line, and it will be third down and about five. And I've never seen a defensive lineman make his weight known to the quarterback <laughs> more than I just saw Booby Miles, who rolled purposely <laughs> belly first onto our guy. And I don't know if that deserves a pause, but I didn't do it, guys. Blame Booby Miles right there. 
Shout outs to the guys on the U that have built this roster. We always talk about Ryan Shamar, but Jovito Sams and our guy, Booby Miles, tap outs, tap outs, tap outs. Marcel Bates, those are some of the architects of this great franchise who has been really the cornerstone of the A7FL since our first season as a professional organized league. So shout outs to those guys. And third and five, shout outs to the Snow Tribe with a chance to convert. Third and five, three wide receivers set, three on the line. Keels alone in the backfield. The snap, Keels tipped, and it will be fourth down. And if you leave Rashad Knight uncovered, unblocked, he puts his hands up there, and Keels is just not able to get the pass over his clutches. And it'll bring up fourth and five. Interesting to see what the Snow Tribe does here. You think the, the, the analytics might tell you that you have a decent chance on fourth and five to convert, especially with a running quarterback, but that close to your own end zone, it's tough to hypothetically maybe give the ball to the U, basically in one play scoring range, but with 141 in the third quarter, Matt, they're running out of time, the Snow Tribe are, especially the way that they play offense. That front doesn't want to show that they're laced. They're looking to shape up here on special teams in L.A. It's 34 to 20. The Aces lead the Hunters. We'll have more on that as we progress here, but it will be a three-on-one throw-off. And it will be number three, Marcel Chapman, throwing this one off, and they will make it a return. Nope, they will not make that one a returnable ball. And that will be called out at the 26. Not awful field position for the Patterson U here. And it was actually a, a pretty good turn of field position for the U. Uh, excuse me, for the Snow Tribe. You know, they're pinned back relatively close to their own end zone. They're able to get it back on the other side of the field. You know, 25 going out is not great field position for you. So credit Marcel Chapman for the deep and accurate throw out of bounds. And if the Snow Tribe really want a chance in this game, in my opinion, Matt, this drive is, is a need to stop drive for the Snow Tribe. They need to get the ball back to their offense if they want a chance to make up the deficit here. First and 10, 21 to six, your score. Dot Boston eligible receiver, Carlos Croslin remaining under center. Two wide receivers set. The snap, play action, Croslin will throw this ball deep downfield. It's a horse race to get it. It'll be out of reach of the receiver, Pat Coburn, who was also out of bounds. But that ball see, was going out of bounds. But you see there the, the, the confidence now Carlos Carlson has again after that touchdown run. He goes right back up top looking to score in back-to-back -back plays. Play action goes to Pat Coburn. A great, great option if you're looking for a touchdown, throwing it to a wide receiver. Just misses, but what that does to the defense is it spreads them out, makes them honor that pass play. And with the offensive line that they have in there, Deshaun Johnson, I can't even say that. Deshaun Johnson and the Miller and the Dot Boss, they're going to be able to run the ball if they want to. And it will be second and 10, clock continuing to run after the incompletion. Two wide receivers in motion, number four, that's Ski Johnson. The handoff, that's to Easterling, and he'll be brought down at the 36. And when Willie gets the ball and he has a little bit of a seam, you know he's going to get a minimum seven yards. And that's the explosiveness that you get from almost every running back in the stable for the U. And that'll be the end of the third quarter, Matt. Put your fours up. We didn't think it was going to be this close <laughs> of a game. It's a two-score game with 15 minutes left in either the Snow Tribe or the Patterson U season. The Snow Tribe need to stop the U four times to get the ball back and try to make something happen. Will the Patterson U find a way to make it to the next round? Can they hold on to the lead? Or will the front fall around them and the Snow Tribe try to snow them in? We'll be back in a moment with the fourth quarter. It's the A7FL playoffs. Hmm. <laughs> 
21 to 6, your score. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. Bringing you back quick and in a hurry. It'll be first and 10. Snap. Roslin, he'll keep it. He will be met by the Snow Tribe defense, and he will be brought down at the line of scrimmage by number 30. It's Isaac Malaria, and he's. He, it looked like Carlos Croslin was doing his best. Jonathan Keel's impersonation, just uh, just not the exact same thing as his touchdown run earlier, but great play from the Snow Tribe defense, forces second and 11. The raw way victory would mean an entire reseeding of the playoffs. If the U win, they play the BIC. If the Snow Tribe win, they go to Baltimore, and the Animals will play the BIC next Sunday here in Asbury Park. I jokingly said that the Animals are, are hoping for the Snow Tribe to win, but if you're the Animals, would you rather play BIC or the Watchmen? It's, it's a pick-your-poison situation. Smoke in motion. The snap, play action, Crosland on second and 11. Throws it deep and not able to get there. That one was trending out of bounds and it will be third down. Intended for Kareem, pardon me, number three, Henry Smith. Well, and it's interesting the way that the, the Patterson U decided to go with their offensive play calls on this drive. You see when they decide to run the ball, they easily get the first down in the 10 yards they need. When they've they've done the play action and they're going for, you know, the throat of the Snow Tribe with a deep play, the Snow Tribe are able to stop it or, or they're just missing. So on third and 11, all the Snow Tribe have to do is make the play on this one play. They get the ball back. 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time for them to do what they need to do if they can effectively execute offense. If the U have been paying attention to this game, they better put their 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 best foot forward because the Snow Tribe have come here to play today. Yeah, if they bring this against the BIC next week, who knows what will happen. The snap, Isaac Negron coming in, caught, but is it in bounds? That was such a great play from Pat Coburn to even snag it. I'm just not sure if the throw was put in a position where he could get his foot down. We'll see what the call is here. And we'll see what the see what the replay says. Well, the penalty flag on the play is likely offensive holding on Isaac Negron. And they will move. Oh. Check it out here. Dot Boss grabs him. Just enough to get the pass off. And if it was caught. I don't know if he got his foot down. No, I don't know if he did. If if that's if that's not a penalty, I don't if, if that's not It'll a be catch. Third down. But if that's not a catch, I don't know if I take that penalty, Matt. I would have forced him no, on fourth I think, and 11. I th third and 21, though. Third and 21 is rough. Yeah, well, third and 21 right, for the U Kareen, is still convertible. Watch Kareem Moon at the bottom of your screen. The quick well, screen. Baltimore special. But incomplete. Trying to go to Snag Sosa. Baltimore to Baltimore. They end up getting crab dipped out of play, and it'll be fourth and 21. Wow, that was a Baltimore special. That's a Baltimore quarterback throwing to a Baltimore guy. It looked like in Snags. I'm not sure if that was Snags or that the other guy. That was Snags. Yeah, that was Snags, right? Orange uh, Shiesty, always the what top. Is, what is going on with Carlos Carlson? Because right now he's just not in sync, and that well, should have been saw, a touchdown. We saw it during the playoff last year when he was behind center for the Gators, and we saw it a couple of times this year against the Watchmen. When there's that level of pressure, when there's that, and he's a great player, he's a great athlete. But it's it's an any number of things, and this Snow Tribe defense has been throwing at him all afternoon. The snap on the three on one that'll be a returnable ball, He's got and a here chance. comes an opportunity for Tyshawn Robinson. Tyshawn Robinson will cut to the sideline. Tyshawn Robinson pushed out at the forty one, knocked into his own teammate, and Robinson will take a breath there, and that's number twenty three, Sadiq Pitts, in on the tackle. 12.25 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. Big Rob Fabian's birthday is today. He is not joining us. He'll be back next week and we, as we enter the divisional round. And we are bringing you action all afternoon here on the A7FL.TV and on the zone at 7 o'clock. Me and Corey will be here for the Insomniacs and the Kryptonite. And then after that, on A7FL.TV and also Fox 5.2, you'll be able to watch the Force and the Sick with it. That one's going to be an insane matchup. That one has the opportunity to go either way. Well, and, and that's what we said about the 4-5 and the 3-6 matchup for the East Coast, right, Matt? 
And then what we got is that the 4-5 was a blowout, and this game so far has been a lot tighter than we expected. Are we potentially in a situation where the Kryptonite can play Snow Tribe against the Insomniacs at 7? Here's Shane Turner on the jet motion. And there's the handoff to Marquise Mouchet. Marquise Mouchet bouncing off the blocker, running down the sideline. You already snow. Touchdown, Rahway. It's a one-score game. And, and the Patterson, you are playing around with the Snow Tribe team, and it's getting cold pretty early here in the summer in Asbury Park. We're down at the snow, but the Snow Tribe are saying that winter is coming for the U if they keep messing around with this snow team. Great touchdown and a great play from Suge. And we see here. Get off me. Crashing into him like Dave Matthews in 94. Ain't no way he's getting outran. Touchdown, Snow Tribe. This is a one score game again, Corey. In just a little more, Ants marching into the end zone. Marquise Mouchette, AKA Suge, pouring it on. But this, this extra point here, this championship point, as Big Rob would say when he's not talking about J-Rock's hair, is huge for the Snow Tribe because right now, and if my math does, it serves me correctly, they're still down by two full scores with nine their deficit because if they don't get the extra point here, they need to score two You're, touchdowns. You are correct. You are correct. I'm not a math whiz, but I'm pretty sure 21 minus 12 is 9. So they have to get in here if they want a chance to be able to either tie or take the lead with one possession. And this late in the game in the fourth quarter, and with the run game that the U has shown, there's never been a more important two-point conversion <laughs> right now than it looks like the Snow Tribe are running out of time. Snow Tribe, he's still Marcel Chapman. Oh, ball. Ball. Oh, ball. It's live. It's live. Oh, no. uh, and the big man brought down, but it is a two-score game still. Oh. 12 to 21. And as great as that run was to score the touchdown, they needed at least one. Credit to you, standing up tall when that mattered most on a championship point. But 21-12, man, ah, oh, that's so tough. That's such a tough situation. Because now, as great as the Snow Tribe have stayed close in this game they're still down by two scores 21 to 12 your score Marquise Mouchette did this to make it a nine point game can the Rahway Snow Tribe get one more stop as their drones fly into the air so do Patterson U defenders will it be Croslin or will it be Kareen Moon behind center after this play from Shug it's 12 to 21 the U in the lead but it's a close one 12 to 21, your score. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. And somewhere in the distance, you can hear Zach upset about something. Zach, it's okay, bud. Shout out to Zach Morgan, our technical director. The Snow Tribe still has a chance. I know you wanted them to get that <laughs> at championship point. But as we sit here with 1151, Henrock, who's had a pretty good game here and is, is his, basically his debut for the U this season. He's a longtime A7FL player. We've seen him before. Maybe not on the games of the week, but it'll be Shane Turner walking out for the three-on-one to throw off to Henrock. But with 11.51 left to go, you got the two-minute warning. You got all three timeouts. There's so much time left. What the, the tough part is is you wish you could have gotten the tie, but at the end of the day, That's for Snow Tribe to win, they were going to have to score twice anyway. So we'll see what Henrock can do on the three-on-one return. Henry Smith jumps over one defender. Henry Smith running down the sideline. Henry what? Smith keeping it going. He hit bye, the wide button. Bye. Side Patterson, you. What? Me worry. Six more on the board. And Patterson, you making it a 27-12 game. And that six that Suge just put on the board completely erased from a Bobby Newman level hurdle. Wow. Wow. And we see here again. On the yeah. Hit him with that. Yeah. Hit him with the power up. And going into the mushroom kingdom. The princess is not in another castle. He defeats him and gets in there. Touchdown, Patterson. He definitely, he definitely got that mushroom after he did that jump. He, he did the jump, <laughs> got the mushroom, and then took off. Shout-outs to Chris Pratt, an American legend. Uh, he's also he? voices Mario. Eh, he, though? Man, maybe I'm overselling it. Maybe, oh, I'm, maybe I'm overselling it. 
11.51 left to go. But forever, he, Chris Pratt, not, to, not that this has anything to do with the A7FL, but he will forever be a legend based on the blooper of comeback stories and Kim Kardashian, <laughs> Google it. One point, at, one point attempt from the five for the U. And we already talked about how important these points are. 27 to 12, your score. 15 point lead for the Patterson U, the snap. Croslin in, looking for something. Thrown, tipped, intercepted. It'll be a dead ball, but that is a, uh, that's a boon for the Rahway Snow Tribe on defense. Well, and they make the play there, but the play that mattered was the three on one, and they didn't make the play here. And if you're talking about hurdles, yeet. Number that's four, the one. And that's Eddie Pettio getting caught in 1080p. Wow. And what's a shame about that is it's, that's an elite level of athleticism to even keep your balance on that hurdle. Because there was contact made, and a lot of dudes are falling right on their face after that. Credit Henrock for the Mario leap. 27 to 12, your score. Henrock saying, what me worry? I'm not worrying. I'm looking to move on to the next round. You in the lead. 27 to 12, your score. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond on A7FL.TV and internationally on the zone. It is the wild card round, and there you see Tyshawn Robinson, a man known as the Cheetah, looking to run it back for the Broadway Snow Tribe. The Patterson U with the lead, but Broadway been in this one after the throw off, and this ball will be a high arcing ball. And that's caught and run out of play at the 22. He couldn't stop his own momentum. Well, and that's the second mistake he's made. He had the, fir, the fair catch, which didn't necessarily make any, mis, any sense. But there, if he just lets the ball go out of bounds, he'll have that attempt from the 25 to match three-on-one returns. And a guy who we've seen convert those three-on-ones into touchdowns in Tyshawn Robinson, the cheetah. A mistake there. He puts Keels in a tough situation. <sighs> Down 15. It's still only a two-score game, so even though that's a great return... And a great play from the U to get back up on this team. Took it really, no time on the clock. Really doesn't make that big of a difference. It was still going to be a two-possession game for the Snow Tribe. So really no harm, no foul after they stopped the extra point. But with the clock ticking down, tick, tick, tick. 15 points for the Rawway Snow Tribe. We've seen how hard it was for them to get 12. It's just going to be interesting if they go away from the run game, which is probably their best attribute and their best way of scoring points. And it looks like the Covington Heist will be playing the Sin City Chaos next week for the Ohio Championship at 7 o'clock. It'll be the Insomniacs and the Kryptonite in their first ever A7FL playoff game. Jonathan Keel will keep it. Jonathan Keel almost gets the ball swatted out, but it will be second down. Still fighting, still grinding it in the middle of that defense, and no matter how hard the U try to stop Keels, he's still able to get positive yardage. And I'll bring up second and manageable because they went with the counter. Because when you when when you fake it now to Shug, you have to honor that. So good play. Keeping the ball Shug, moving. Do you Go think ahead. if Shug got the ball there, he would have been able to get more yards? Because it looked like they didn't bite on Shug getting the ball and they kept their eye on Keel. Yeah, I, it's it's tough because the the U is the type of defense that they have the they have the playmakers to honor both sides of that counter, that that read option, we'll say. So it looks like they had guys in position for both, but hey, if, it, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Hand the ball off to Shug. Second and five, Keel will keep it. Jonathan Keel will cut through, try to stutter step a little too much, and will get near the first down marker. And that extra fight gave him that extra half yard, which might have gave him the first down. Let's see where the spot is. That was basically a student body left, and they just <laughs> went everybody block for Keels. Thought he might have a seam. But looks like it's first down. It'll be first and 10, 9.55 left to go. And there's the play. Ooh, the handoff immediately bouncing off the defender. Cuts through. Finds there's a way. Devin. And Devin, get Devin Kennedy getting to the 37. It'll be second down. Second and six, pardon me. Well, that jet that uh, when he hands it that. off to him originally should have been dead to rights in the, in the backfield. Credit Devin for getting that many yards, but Sadiq Pitts able to stop a potential touchdown because if, <laughs> if Devin's able to get past there, he's got the kind of speed as a speed trainer by trade. 
34 to 26. The Aces are over the hundred of the two-minute warning around the A7FL. And that's a lot closer of a score than I expected. Credit the Hunters. And maybe they have a chance in winning and getting the upset. Keel throws this one caught. And here comes an opportunity for number zero. That's Ricky Barnett. Barnett will get to the 50. My boy getting to the 50, 49. And it will be first down. And we'll call him with that orange sash. We'll call him Michelangelo on that play. <laughs> and Mikey the Ninja Turtle known on SportsCenter Instagram, guys, for his play against the Renegades, in which he stiffed arm a man's soul off of his body, Hollywood gets the Rick. first down. First and 10 at the 50. Keel will throw. He'll keep it, actually. Keel will throw this one down. Field out of reach of the receiver. It'll be second down. Just Miss Devin down the field. Keels wants that one back. Devin wants that one back. But the Snow Tribe are still fighting here with eight left in the fourth. And we see here on that run from big old Ricky Barnett. Mm. Hollywood Rick gone viral, looking to go viral one more time and stay alive in the A7FL playoffs. And you see him with all the hussin' and the hussin', but his, the strength of his game is, is that it takes a ton of dudes to take him down in the open field. And the entire time, he was letting the U hear from him. If you're the Snow Tribe, you look at that player and you look at the way that he's able to play, you, you almost wish that you could design more offense for him. But it'll be second and ten after the incompletion. And there's the handoff again, utilizing the run game. Pushing through, getting to the 40. And that's another strong run from this Snow Tribe offense. It's Marquise Mouchette, who's had himself a day so far. And they've had a stable of running backs the Snow Tribe have, and all of them are have been able to produce in spurts, but it's Shug who has been the class of their backfield as we see Shane Turner in motion again. And it's Cap moving up field, getting the first down. No, getting closer to the first down. And that one, a tackle helped by number 28. That's Stephen Jones. It looks like Keels did get the first down. And this Snow Tribe offense, if they were able to do this all season, this... This type of offense, this style in which it's quick passes, use misdirection on those jets, and find a, a running back that's able to find lanes and hard to bring down. There's, there's Ruben hobbling off, but here's Keels, and this is what he's been doing all game, all season when he's been effective, is finding the middle of the field, and even though he's taking some punishment, he's able to get the yardage that they need to convert for the first down. The Vegas Hunters will join the... East Orange Renegades in being out of the A7FL Ooh. tournament. They have been knocked out by the LA Aces 34 to 26. That is a final in Los Angeles. The LA Aces winning out. They will move on next week. And that means our guy J. Sykes for the sick with it is going to have to wear an Aces jersey right before they play, hypothetically, in the second round of the Vegas playoffs because I guarantee that the Aces would win. So I, they, I saw that honor will, score. They will, it, I believe they will pl They will play the winner of the Force and Sick with it next week on A7FL.TV. And the winner of our game, the Insomniacs and the Kryptonite, will play the winner of the Vibe and the OTT. That game starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. L.A. time. On first and 10, Mouchette. Gets caught at the line of scrimmage, and it will be second down. And Kells and SJ commit to stopping the big man there, and they get to him in the backfield, and then there's another man there to finish the play. That's how you're going to have to bring down a running back like that, and you see the level of, of play that the Patterson you are bringing is, is amping up as the Snow Tribe continue to succeed. Here's Devin Roman! Devin Roman getting inside the 30, getting brought down at the 27, and that's a first down for Rahway. Well, th where there's a will for Jonathan Keels, there's a way. And yes, he just shoveled past that out of a, a sure sack for a conversion and in a manageable third down. Just look at this play. There's no reason at all he should have any chance at it. And, and here he goes again with Jonathan the run. Then Keel getting to the 26 and brought down. And that one will actually make it a fourth down on the third and seven attempt. He's fighting. He's grinding out the yards the best way that he can. The problem is for the Snow Tribe offense, to be honest, is that they just can't complete those deep passes. Every short pass, Jonathan Keels has been right on target and give, giving the ball a guy with a chance to make a play running downfield. It's just on these go-to plays, 
We'll see if Keels has enough in the tank to convert the fourth down in a must convert down by 15 with 445 left in the game. Season on the line. How will the Snow Tribe respond? The handoff to Moose and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. And that's the guy who's been making plays for them all year in Shug. But on fourth down, you got to give your running quarterback a chance by giving him the option to throw or run. But it's Burton who may end the Snow Tribe season with a great play there. And it'll give the Patterson U the ball back with the offensive line to grind this game into oblivion. And we see here Mouchette oh, slipping and it, honestly, off the it's, block. And, and it's Isaac Negra on the defensive standout that came in on the offense to see if he can make a play. And Devon Burton gets Burton. through the crack in the offensive line to make the play in the backfield and brings up and finding those cracks is why Devon Burton, according to Ryan DePaul, is a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Getting the stop there on fourth down with 4.09 left to play. We'll see how the Rahway Snow Tribe defense responds. And the money man waving goodbye to the orange uniforms for the Snow Tribe. It'd be a shame to let him go, but here's Mayweather to maybe end their season. Willie Easterling looking to give the knockout blow is ran out of play after getting inside the 50. We'll get called out of play around the 45, and it will be first and 10 for Patterson. Patterson. Tajon Webster with an interesting point as we watch this game. And Tajon Webster, a longtime player and a very intelligent fan when he's not giving me grief. Watching this game got to be honest. All I'm thinking, boy, Courage and Sterry going to run wild next week. And maybe, maybe he's right, maybe not. And we see here again on the replay, just a great run by Easterling. And having to keep up with that was number nine, Ron Brown. And I will say this to, to John Webster and anybody assuming that the BIC defense is going to stand up a little bit differently. Look at the offensive line. This is the same offensive line that handed that BIC roster their first loss and their only loss in, in two years. 2.58 left to go. The handoff again to Easterling. He had a little trouble handling that ball, but Ron Brown, he'll run through him. Isaac Negron will get him down at the 31. And the bonus here for Isaac Negron being able to defeat his former team in the playoffs is slowly dissipating away as the former DPOY has been, was strong in the first half, being able to get to Carlos Croslin. But when they made that switch to Kareem Moon. This game got a lot closer, a lot faster, and the U scored once, and that's all they needed to turn the tide in this game and take the lead. But you can't talk about this game without talking about how the Snow Tribe were so... It's night and day compared to our first game of the day between the Animals and the Renegades. And you wouldn't have thought that. You would have thought this scenario would have gone completely differently. And uh, this, this is a coming out party for the Snow Tribe if they can keep this core together. And this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. In motion, and there's the two-minute warning. Oh, they'll play the play, the toss, and here comes an opportunity for number six. That's Daryl Luck, and Daryl Luck will get to the 20, and that's the two-minute warning. Counter shovel pass. Daryl Luck finds a seam, gets the first down. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably make some enemies with this comment here, but if, uh, if the U were as, I don't know, Gen Z as a, a team out in Vegas, we, we would name Sick With It, and gave out awards for every single week, including against teams like the Gold who don't have a win on the season. Matt, I would give maybe the player of this week for the U to an offensive line, Deshaun Johnson, number 76, who to me has been by far and away on film so far that I've seen the most impactful player of this game, offense or defense. The snap, and there's the handoff, and immediately met at the line oh by number double zero, and he's stopped and dragged back, and it will be second down, and there's a player down on the field, and that is Booby Miles. No, that's oh, one correction, of, sorry, Daniel Miller. Yeah, that's one of the Miller brothers, and they're going to need him if they want to go far in this year's playoffs, so let's hope that he can get up relatively quickly. But if we watched, unfortunately, what happened to Najee Hall on the replay there, number 20, we're probably going to not want to have... That replay, uh, yeah, that based was, on what happened to Najee Hall, number 20. But, hey, man, this, this game did not go exactly as we expected it to. No. I think based on where we are and what's happening in this drive, 
that you are likely going to walk out today's victors. A lot can happen. There's still some time left. But you do have to credit the Schnell Tribe, not only on their progression this season, figuring out who they were and getting a, a chance to to make a statement against a team like the U, a, a, an upper echelon team in this league. It's just not enough when you really break it down. What they were not able to do is answer the U when it mattered most on the fourth downs, on the third and longs. And when the U decided that they wanted to just bully the Snow Tribe and run it down their throat, they were getting whatever they wanted with any of their running backs. And they were, and they were. I just got it from my uh, from our producer Alex Sober, and he walked off on his own power. So gotcha. Said, yeah. Yep. So that's going to be huge moving forward for them. When with 1:30 left and the clock's ticking down, we do have to ask if the Snow Tribe improved from last year, in which they were basically in the exact same position here, just losing to the Force. Now they're playing a team in the U, which the force would hope were on their level. But again, first round exit of the playoffs. Did they take a step forward? Well, they seem like a much better team than they did at the start of the season or the end of last year, but that one will end that season for the Snow Tribe. Sadiq Pitts putting six more on the board, locking in next week. The Patterson U and the Trenton BIC for the fifth time in two seasons will face off and, well, for the third straight year in a win-or-go-home game, the U and the BIC will face off and it's for the King of New Jersey. It, 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 that's, as, that's as much as we can say. Like, this is the two teams that have carried the A7FL for the last four seasons, the teams that you think of when you see the A7FL, Ashante Worthy, Freehold legend was shouted out yesterday on social media, went a little viral on that end. And seeing him and Sterry Codrington next week against this U team, you got to wonder what Kenny Stansberry is looking at and thinking of to try to, if they're going to throw this same look, because we know that Ryan Shamar is going to change things up. But a lot of what we saw in this game is what we saw against the BIC earlier in the season, Corey. Yeah, and, and as we see this extra point from the five-yard line, which would be a one-point extra point, it really is mood at this point is Mayweather playing quarterback, which is not his position, and somehow almost finding the end zone on a broken play. <laughs> really what it breaks down for me is next week, if and when, it, we will say if because it's not over yet, yeah. but it is. If and when the U plays BIC, it's, it's an interesting conversation because did we see some chinks in, in, in the U armor that maybe the BIC can exploit? I don't know. But also, BIC hasn't played in five weeks. And if you talk about meaningful games, it's been longer than that. 33 to 12, the U pretty much putting a stamp on the Snow Tribe season and entering the second round of the A7FL playoffs for that rematch we're talking about. Stay tuned. We got a seven o'clock game coming up. Matt Ryan joined alongside Corey Hammond. He had such a good outro on that one. I yeah, I thought we were. I, it, yeah, they were. They were. They were doing the, the music. I was kind of hesitating to, to to give it that final punch, and then they go straight back into three on one. So for, if you're watching us on a7fl.tv, YouTube.com/slash a7fl or DAZN, that's the zone for those who don't know. And we got to talk about what's coming up next at the top of the hour. Yes, we do. It is the Insomniacs and the Kryptonite. Uh, after this, we'll go through some highlights. We'll talk through some stuff. And then we're going to get ready for the top of the hour. At the top of the hour, we'll count down to throw off. And right now, we are having our throw off. Tyshawn Robinson will return this one. He is inside his 20. Tyshawn Robinson. Spins out, spins around, tries to keep the play alive, and he will be stopped, stifled, and brought Ooh. down at the 25 by Tyron Brown, the Honey Badger, and number 23, Sadiq Pitts. Minute six with all their timeouts Did he left. do a full 360 degrees I of rotation he, in the I, air? I think he did. Oh, my goodness what? gracious. Goodness gracious. Now this Tyron is what Brown, this is what dude. some of my haters would call Corey Hammond time. The game is is decided, <laughs> and Keels will be padding stats if he's anything like myself. And he but hits this that. Wah! Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. So it's a 270. one. That's two seventy at least. It's a one-handed cartwheel, and also 
On, on A7FL.TV, we will be bringing you two versions of the Insomniac Kryptonite game. One version will be me and Corey broadcasting. The other version will be featuring Casey Cox, Scott McCorkle, and Dub Alvarez. So if you want to hear those guys, you can head on over there or if you want to ride with us until the top of the hour when we bring you that game. And and, and it really sets up a really great opportunity to talk about the the pretty much the introduction to the games of the week of the Insomniacs as we see Keels throwing a ball Ooh, and... Off the hands of the receiver. That was number 11, the intended receiver. And that one will yep. be incomplete. And that's exactly who it was. This is we look. We both looked to the roster to find out who's wearing number 11 today for the Snow Tribe and couldn't find it. But it just kind of shows you, you know, Keels gets the ball Isaiah out there. Isaiah Ruiz. Isaiah Ruiz was the intended receiver. Nice. Good job. But incomplete. So he wore the jersey. That's at minimum what he did. But it, it, the Insomniacs are a team that if you pay attention to our league and you watch us and wherever podcasts are sold, A7FL presents the three-on-one. Our top ten has featured the Insomniacs at number one pretty much all season. Yeah. So this is really their first opportunity for us to call their game. And they're playing a team in the Kryptonite, which they are favorites against. But just like this game, a lot has to be decided. Here's Keels. Wobbler, and that one will be incomplete, and it will be third down with 58 seconds left to go in under two minutes. The clock stops on incompletions, and plays ran out of bounds. Yeah, and ro rolling out to his left, firing towards the middle of the field is not necessarily Jonathan Keel's strong suit. But you have to give the young, the he's relatively young, the young man credit for the game that he's put together today under center for the Snow Tribe. Facing a, a Patterson U defense, which we could all agree is, was one of the top units in the league. And they've always been a tough defense since they've existed in this league. So for him to come out and, and give us the type of fight and, and the close game that we did not expect coming into this, it speaks a lot to the type of work that he's put in with this team this season. And, you know, kind of the evolution since that one game in which we saw a little bit of the frustration get to him and the rest of his team. Snap, Keel. With the catch. There's Gabe. And he Gabriel will. Gabriel Sanchez gets, down the field. Gets past the 50 and brought out of play. And Sanchez with 52 seconds left will keep the Snow Tribe in this one. Pad them stats, young man. Pad <laughs> them stats. If we look at the passing yardage for Keelson today, he's actually racked them up if we include that approximately 30-ish yard throw, which is not necessarily his game. But that's what you need to do if you want Keels to succeed in the pass game. You give him a quick target, open because of design. He's able to deliver an on-time throw, and the Snow Tribe are moving, you know, despite how little this may affect the actual outcome of the game. you got to play out the season. Keels, snap. Throws out of the reach of the receiver off the hand and hit and Kells Gallimore in the foot. Well, and that's Ron Brown, who's the intended receiver, and I'm not sure if it was a miscommunication from quarterback to wide receiver or just a you know off-target throw. But the clock stops, and we get more Snow Tribe football. 49 seconds left to go. You score 33 to 12. And a lot of questions heading into this game about the Patterson U next week, how J-Rock Rodgers will play into it. Whether or How not. he'll look playing in it as well, yes. A lot going on in the chat, specifically on YouTube comments. Uh, shout outs to Big Rob Fabian, who may be the star of the chat, because I've never seen more pineapple emojis in my life. Well, uh, you gotta, well, as long as they're not upside down, Keel will throw it, caught. Here's an opportunity for Gabe. Gabe gets down the sideline. Oh, my goodness! Wow! And I don't know if that's technically the, the most legal of tackles, but if you're going to catch a, a pass over the middle and try to score on the U, prepared for a hit. SJ making sure that the Rawway Snow Tribe don't put another six on the board. And when we return, we'll see here. Quick one. Bing, and then uh, wait for it. Bong! Pop and it is a shoulder. first down, though, my guy. It does technically count as a first down. So he does and make the, the right uh, referee signal after the catch. And a season-high passing today for Jonathan Keels. 
The snap, the throw, and out of reach. Mm. And that's over to number 18. That's Pedro. It's Pedro Bauzo. It's Dro and incompletion. And they go with the Baltimore special, but you know what? If you can't complete the Baltimore special, you're going to have somebody very frustrated because for all that we talk about Dro activating full ice cream truck mode a couple weeks ago, if you don't remember, the ice cream truck met Dro, and since then he's an unstoppable player for the BIC, even though they haven't played in four weeks. No, don't touch it. Don't touch it, man. We got the close-up on you. Big Rob's been asking for it all game and for his birthday. Happy birthday, Rob. There is the close-up, and I do have to say, you see the hair out of place there in the back? That is not fake. That is his real hair. Long head, don't care. J-Rock Rogers. And we see here again on the replay, you see Jarris Rogers coming in for the tackle. But Gabe with a big run here. But gets hit with that fuera by Stephen Jones. That one's going to be on a reel. Oops. Oh, no. Comes loose. Pulls out, J-Rock. And Jarris Rogers. And you see the form there. He dives in, shoulder down, head out to make sure the hair stays great. Big Rob, happy birthday. Look, I don't see any lines in there. Now, everybody knows that I know nothing about hair like this, so maybe I shouldn't be the one talking, but I'm pretty sure I can confirm 100%, just like DRC plays in the A7FL, J-Rock Rogers. That's just a shape up, my guys. <laughs> it's real hair. Pineapple emojis everywhere. And with 28 seconds left, we'll see what tomfoolery we get from the Patterson U. Kells Gallimore saying great game to the refs and, you know, hair matches hair. That No, no, one's, no one's saying that Kells Gallimore hair is, is a weaver, not real. Money Man is saying fake. Let's get a chat. Let's get a poll in this chat if we can. I don't know anything about this, and I'm always asking Matt to do things that are sometimes <laughs> not possible. Let's get a poll in the chat. J-Rock, weave or shape up? Thoughts? <laughs> 34 seconds left. Second and 10. At least Matt's enjoying my tomfoolery. I don't always get as many laughs. Oh, I'm just so tired. We have more to go, young man. We have more to go. Jay Pineapple recovers, according to Tony Loke, but that will be the knee to end the Snow Tribe season. It was a great game for them, especially based on what we expected at the half, Matt, 13 to 6. 33 to 12, and this one is pretty much all over. The Patterson U will move on to the divisional round one more time to an, square off with the Trenton BIC. And another birthday present for our guy, Big Rob. You will, next time you see us, get a chance to watch the U and BIC play A7FL football. What more could you ask for? And with uh, with that, I want to say goodbye. I want to bring the bed down a little bit. I want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us. When we are back at the top of the hour, it will be the raw. It will be in Nas in the in Las Vegas, in Nevada. It will be the Kryptonite taking on the Insomniacs, the four seed taking on the one seed. But next week, the biggest rivalry in the A7FL comes to the divisional round of the playoffs. It'll be win or go home season. Will we have a new champion? We'll find out on the other side. We'll be back in just a moment. We'll be back at the top of the hour with the A7FL Wild card round the you with the win 33 to 12 this has been a broadcast of the american sevens football league like follow and share on our facebook page at a7fl tv